Now, after what I thought was a rather good, solid episode last week with plenty of emotion behind it and some good character development, especially for Tech and Omega, we got yet another episode this week that, no, wasn't bad, but also wasn't all that great or anything special. Another episode where the Bad Batch is just kind of there, doing normal Bad Batch things. Though initially when I saw that this was indeed going to pick up from last week and be at least a two-part story arc, I was pretty excited because, as I've discussed before, one of the more disappointing aspects of the show thus far has been the one-off Mission of the Week type episodes. Instead of chaining them together in two story arcs and giving the individual stories a bit more breathing room. And so I thought, well, maybe there will be some sort of interesting mystery to be uncovered at this seemingly abandoned spaceport. Something to do with the Empire, perhaps. And maybe the Bad Batch will be stuck there for several days in a very difficult and dangerous situation. Just waiting on Sid to finally show up and when she has essentially got nothing better to do, she will show up and pick him up and... That'll then show us even more animosity forming between the two, if not be the breaking point. Instead, Omega figures out that Gonki, that's their power droid, can be tracked and it turns out the ship isn't all too far away, it's still on the planet, and that they'll be able to fix up a skiff that they found and that they've been working on and they'll be able to get there in no time. We then get formally introduced to our thief who, despite a rather vague resemblance to Hondo, Turns out to be anything but him. Instead, it was just some kid named Benny trying to gain favor with what amounts to the local corrupt business owner who's keeping all the profits from a large Ipsian mine for himself and giving only scraps to the ones actually doing all the work. Despite, as we'll learn later on in the episode and what turns out to be his undoing, that he's making huge profits. There's even a rather disturbing scene of him just gorging on all types of food before offering up only a bowl of soup to his current top earner for the quarter, before then giving just another bowl of soup to the others to share, including Benny despite him thinking and hoping that he'd be able to become top earner because of stealing the Marauder. Soon enough then, the Bad Batch get to the mine and they catch up with Benny and they make him take them to the ship where they find out it's already been a bit disassembled, that the hyperdrive has been removed and they'll have to fix it all up to be able to take off. Also, there are ray shields that will have to be disabled, which is, as you can probably see coming a mile away, that's left up to Omega and Benny to take care of because any others would stick out too much according to Benny and only Omega will be able to blend in. We then see, as will also be no surprise to pretty much anyone, that Omega comes to understand Benny and the plight of him and his people. He talks about how they have so very little and they even have to compete for food, to which Omega says no one should ever have to do such a thing. And Benny says that's how it works here, we have to earn our share. Which, yes, maybe makes it sound like this episode has a bit of an anti-capitalism vibe going on. The people even take control of the mind in the end, and it sounds like they will share everything going forward, and it'll be a big happily ever after for all these people. Anyway, even though it does kind of feel that way, deliberate or not, it not only comes off ringing hollow if it is deliberate, coming from Disney of all companies, but I really don't think your average kid will look that deep into this episode. They'll probably get a message about greed being bad, which has always been a core theme of Star Wars, and not a bad one to learn. Plus, I think this episode was more about showing us a microcosm of the Empire itself, what happens when one or a few have power over many, rather than perhaps making any other kind of point. This was the Bad Batch again coming to see the struggles of the common folk of the galaxy, and potentially realizing they can and should be doing more about it. Tech even alludes to something like this in the end when he talks about how there are more of us than them. Anyway, to backtrack a bit and wrap up the recap of the episode, Benny at one point betrays Omega and hits a button that alerts Mecco, that's the corrupt business owner, alerts him about what's going on. But after doing that, and after Omega offers him some rations, offers some rations to Benny, it comes to light that actually the Ipsium isn't deteriorating, as Mecco claims, and in all reality, he's making a ton of money at the expense of everyone else. Benny, of course, comes to regret his betrayal, especially when he learns the truth about his boss, and it's up to the rest of the Bad Batch to pretty much literally swoop in to save the day. Mecco and his greed are then exposed to all the workers who then attack and dispose of him, and um, then they take control of the means of production. 
And look, again here, I don't know if there was any kind of intentional message of any kind in here or not, because even though I do think kids oftentimes understand more than they're given credit for, and I do always see this strange kind of argument that something meant for kids can be or even should be completely dumbed down for some reason, or that if it's a kid's show, it's okay for it to have zero meaning and to be utterly frivolous, which sure, kids can watch irreverent stuff, that's fine. But it's still such an odd argument to make. You'd think meaning would be even more important in shows aimed at the young. Either way, as I said, I don't think kids are taking anything more away from this episode than greed is bad. I think this, in a way, was another Omega-centric episode for kids to sort of go on an adventure vicariously through her, for her to be this sort of self-insert character. Which is something I've talked about a lot, that she is in there mainly for the kids, filling the same role Ahsoka did in The Clone Wars that Ezra did in Rebels. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's a bad show or that I haven't enjoyed much of it. There's been some really, really great episodes throughout its two-season run, or season and a half so far. But pretty much all of those episodes have been, for a lack of a better way of putting it, they've been the more adult-oriented or adult-feeling episodes. They've dealt with things that, yeah, are more likely to be either missed or less enjoyed by your average kid, and they're also usually the episodes that don't have Omega front and center. And thus the show generally has this really bad habit of, rather overtly, swinging back and forth between these two extremes, you could call them. One episode will feel like I'm watching a straight-up kid's show with maybe a very basic theme or message underneath. The next week I'm watching something more akin to a political thriller with all kinds of intrigue and deeper meaning. Again, I think the biggest problem with the show is it doesn't know what exactly it even wants to be or who it should be for. It both wants to appeal to kids and adults, and sure, that can work a lot of the time, but it doesn't know how to merge that audience most of the time, and only, for the most part, appeals to one or the other with any given episode. And let's be real here, they at Lucasfilm and Disney know that a lot of adults watch this show and don't care so much if it appeals to children. In fact, they probably prefer it didn't and focus on the good stuff that it oftentimes does go into. They no doubt prefer it be more like the later seasons of Clone Wars, which oftentimes were indeed very mature in nature. Yet at the same time, they, Disney and Lucasfilm, they want the show to be a gateway into Star Wars. They want kids to watch it and have a character they can relate to and root for and go on an adventure with. And so they try to make it both things and it just ends up hurting the show both ways in my opinion. I don't know that anyone ends up happy all of the time with this show. Anyway, that's just how this episode left me feeling. I didn't love it, I didn't hate it, and for the most part I was entertained by it. But mainly it left me wishing they could figure out what exactly they wanted to do with this show and run with it already. And like I was saying, I get it that they have or want to cater to two very different crowds with this show. But I can't help but again wonder if their indecisiveness is only chasing away both. Well, that's all I've got for this time, and now I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this, on this episode itself, or what you think about the series and this kind of indecisive nature of it. So do take to the comments below, tell me what you think, and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.